Hey guys, and welcome to part 5 of this unitycookie.com tutorial. Now, our shader is looking pretty good, but it's still using Lambert shading. What we want to do is let's have a go at creating some specularity on our shader. And that's just going to make it that much more awesome. So, first thing we need to do is we need to duplicate our shader. So this one here is going to be lesson 5. Okay, and here is our lesson 5 shader. And what we need to do is let's go bumped specular. Now we could go in and create a standard specular, but we might as well use our button map while we're at it. I'm sure you guys are confident enough to follow along. So the first thing we need to do with this shader to make it a use specularity is we need to write in blin bong. And this is a, another lighting model. As we discussed in the first video, another lighting model that is used within Unity. So if I just go into my CG includes folder, oh, cancel, drag this up into here. So this is all the stuff that's brought in with lighting. And there's our Lambert lighting. We come down here and we have lighting blin fong. All right. Now there is a difference between the Lambert and the blin fong. The blin fong, apart from having all of this fancy little text in here, I can see we're gonna we're gonna cover all this uh, in lighting, but we have this spec color. It's expecting a spec color. So unlike the Lambert, which we can just use, we need to specify a specular color to use in here. Okay. And you can also see it's just going to be the alpha. So um, alpha down there and spec color RGB up there. So it's quite a nice little, quite a nice little uh, lighting model. So because of that, we need to come up here and we need to write in spec color. This one here, it's going to be specular color. It's going to be a color equals white, which is one, 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 one. And that's all we need to do for that. We don't even need to come down here and define it as a float because it's getting used in here. We don't actually need to call it in our surface. We just need to specify that it's there and then we can adjust it in the properties. Okay, what else do we need? We need specular power. Alright, so specular power. This one here is going to be called specular. Power. Now you'll also see this version as shininess. Now I find shininess to be a little bit, um, a little bit odd. I mean, yes, it is shininess, but it seems like a bit of a child, uh, childlike name for it. I'd like to keep this all looking nice and code-like and meaningful to me as a coder. So I'd like to use speak power. But if you'd like to use shininess, you can go ahead and do that. This one here is not going to be a color, it's going to be a range. And the range for this, I'm going to go 0 to 2, with a default of 0 0.5. So we can crank that power right up to 2, where, to the point we can't really see it. You could even put this one here as, as negative 1, if you wanted. But 0 will be fine for now. Okay, so that's all of our variables defined. What we need to do is we need to come down here with the samplers and we need to define our specular power as a float. Okay, so this one here, we can just use a float spec power and it's done. So that one there is defined the spec power. We don't need to define the specular color because it's already being used in that lighting model. We have no use for it down here. 
Okay, well we will use it. Uh, we'll use it. No, we won't use it actually. Okay, so the, the first thing we want to do is we want to bring in two new variables. We want to bring in o dot specular and o dot gloss. Now the gloss is effectively controls where our specularity is being applied. So it's like a spec map. And specular is basically how strong it is. So that's our specular power. So we can come straight in here and we can go equals spec power. And that is fine. We can do that like so. And for the gloss, however, we want to take the alpha channel from our albedo there, so from our main text. Because if we jump into Unity and I grab the robot body diffuse, this one here, if I just open this up in Photoshop, you can see we have an alpha channel. And this contains the specularity of our derivative. Let's just remove that. Jump back into Mono Develop. And to do this, what we need to do is we need to create a new variable. So this is going to be a, just use a fixed for. We don't need to use a float because we're not going to do anything with this. It's just a fix, it's fine. Fixed for is going to equal that without the RGB. So it's just going to equal the text 2D. And now the albedo can equal text 2D dot RGB. Okay, so we've basically just broken that up into two lines, which means we can come down here into the gloss and we can grab, oh, actually, I just forgot that we need to write text in here. Okay, so fix for text equals text 2D. So we're creating a variable called text and it's going to be a four digit floating or well, fixed point number. So RGB and alpha is going to be in it. So we're taking the text to RGB and putting it to the albedo and we're going to take the text.a and plug that into the gloss. So we jump back into Unity, let's see how well that worked. And no errors have occurred, so we need to grab our robot body, grab our Unity cookie, bump specular, and I'm just going to do that on the head as well. It's still using the shader from the first tutorial. Bump specular. Okay, and as you can see, we're now getting some nice specular highlights, and we can. We can move that around and that will react to the light very nicely. So we can see all of that little bit of surface detail in there. And that is looking awesome. Let's come in and grab the robot body. And what we can do is we can adjust the specular power, make it really sharp or really flat. That's not sharp it is. So depending on what surface is. Now notice when you get too far, it goes yellow over here. This is because we're actually going to a value of more than one. And it's starting to saturate the image a little. So don't worry about that. It just allows us to sharpen it up more than we should. And we also have this specular, specular color, which tints our specularity, which is more visible at a less specular level. I'm just going to leave that at white for now. And yeah, that is a specular shader. Okay, so hopefully this uh, all makes sense. It's not, it's not the most difficult of shaders, fortunately. Well, uh, what we've done is just change it to a blend fong lighting model, added in the specular color, which is used within that model. We don't use it anywhere else. 
and we've also used a spec kind of power with a range of 0 to 2, which we've used down here, so I've defined it as a single point float, and we've used it as our specular. Now, also, we have come in and we have taken our texture, we have extracted the RGB into the albedo, and we've taken the alpha into the gloss, which works as a effectively a cutout map for our shader. Okay, and that is it. Let's uh, stay tuned for the next video where we'll take a look at cube map reflections.